Hello everyone, welcome to Need to Know Influencer Marketing. I'm Mark Fidelman of Fanatics Media. Joining me is Gil Ayal, CEO of Hyper Brands. Gil, let's talk about the iPhone 10, or some people call it the iPhone X. All I want to know is what the hell happened to 9? You know, why did they go from 8 to, to, to 10? This is Steve. He must have a good paying job because he just bought two new iPhones. Yeah. The iPhone 8 and the iPhone X. Technically iPhone X is iPhone 10. Then what ate iPhone 9? Would Steve Jobs approve of this whole thing? Because it's that much better. Just one number couldn't signal how much better it is. than the So are they going to start skipping odd numbers from here on out? It will never be an 11, there won't be a 13. That's why I celebrated my 43rd birthday this year. <laughs> I'm going to go in reverse order. So if Apple were smart then, they'd go, to the, they'd go back to 8, then to 6. Anyway, so they've been accused, you know, how this relates to influencer marketing, of course, is they've been accused of cherry-picking their reviews. Now, you think with phone, that skipped a whole generation would be that much better than anything else on the market, yet they're still caught cherry-picking their reviews. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think this is uh, you know something that's happening a lot broader than just um, Apple. I think a lot of uh, companies are realizing that PR and, and appealing to the press isn't as important as it used to be because they can get the message uh, to their audience through people who appeal to that audience and who will say whatever Apple wants them to say. Um, that really pissed off John Gruber, who's a well-known Apple uh, blogger who used to write about everything and, and didn't get access to the device like these other bloggers. And uh, it makes me wonder, I mean, where are we going with this? Um, I, obviously, I'm a big proponent of influencer marketing, but have we lost faith in traditional media to the level where um, everybody's looking at influencers and nobody's reading the news? <laughs> you know, it, it's a great question. I mean, I see that happening. I see more and more people going to influencers instead of the media, instead of these other places where they used to trust, just for an authentic voice. They're so tired of some celebrity pitching the product. They're so, tell, uh, so tired of some nameless actor or actress telling you how great the product is that they're taking more risks. They're, letting, they're giving it to the influencers, and they're saying, hey, show this to your audience. You've already proved you can motivate and, and, and move an audience to purchase. Have at it. And uh, I applaud the move, uh, but I don't like the... I don't like the fact that Apple's kind of playing games with it. They don't need to, or at least I don't think they need to. I've never held an iPhone 10, but it doesn't seem like they needed to. Well, it's a major move forward from the way they used to do influencer marketing. Generally in this industry, if you remember Alicia Keys and, and BlackBerry, she, she tweeted how much she loves her, her BlackBerry from her iPhone. Um, Apple hired Joan Rivers um, and forgot to turn off the auto post after she passed away. So there are a few posts that went live from the grave saying how much she loves her iPhone 6. Um, Samsung got it right. They did an unbox therapy video. So we're seeing the companies starting to understand that you don't need those big names. You need these influencers who have an audience that's genuinely interested in gadgets, genuinely, genuinely wants to hear about the phone. Nobody's going to watch unbox therapy or going to watch some of these influencers unless they really care about learning about the phone. So it's a great way to convey your version of what you want. Now, I actually think the iPhone 10X, whatever it is, doesn't bring anything new to the table. It's not that exciting. So... Um, maybe they were afraid they'd get called out. Maybe they're afraid the traditional bloggers would say, you know what, this isn't that much better than the iPhone 8. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're probably right. I heard the same thing from 7 to 8, too. Like, there wasn't very many differentiating features. It wasn't that great. Most of the, most of the technology that was brought into the 8 came from the new iOS update. So uh, maybe you're right. I mean, and they skipped a whole generation just and called it a 10 because of the 10-year anniversary. I mean, that, that brings, you know, you've got to really live up to that. And it doesn't, it, perhaps that maybe they didn't and they had these popular influencers that, you know, were, if you're being asked by Apple, might have sugarcoated uh, what, they were, what the review was in hopes that they remain in their good graces. I don't know. But I, 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 I totally agree with you on the influencer side. If you have a new tech product, and this goes for really any product, it could be fashion, it could be beauty. I mean, there's just certain products that go well when paired with influencers. No better way to launch a new product, no better way to talk about a product than get, getting it into the hands of those tier one influencers and just having them share their story, share their experience with that product with their, with their audience. Let's be honest, these influencers know very well that if they don't say everything they're supposed to say, they're not getting the iPhone 11. 
or, or 15, whatever they choose to skip to. Um, and I think, you know, just with any tech product, it really gets difficult. How much can you innovate? Okay, so the first iPhone, nobody knew that you could squeeze the screen and make it smaller. And then the next iPhone was light and it ran games and had an app store. And then, you know, at some point, okay, this is great. Um, the music is better. It has more memory. The camera has twice as many megapixels. What, what's the story? You know, at some point, as an industry, you wonder what else can you bring in that's new. And I think Apple is recognizing that that wow factor is going to go away. If they can't wow the reporters, why don't we pay people who will be wowed for a fee? I'm still waiting for wireless charging. I mean, that, that's my wish list. And they haven't even got that done yet. So I, I think, that, I mean, AR, VR, there was people disappointed in kind of their AR, VR features. So I don't know what's going on with the innovation at Apple these days. I don't think Steve Jobs would be that impressed. I don't think he'd be impressed by the way they're using these influencers either. But, you know, what do I know? So, uh, well, Gil, any final thoughts on this? I'm addicted. I can't switch to Android even though I want to. So maybe that's the plan. All right. Well, with that, let us know if you agree, disagree, what's going on with Apple. I see kind of a slow decline here, but I'm, it's still good enough to keep me as a customer and you as a customer, even though they're charging $1,000 for an iPhone 10 that's really a 9 that might even be an 8, 8S, probably what it, what it really is. Uh, so with that, Gil, where can people find you? I'm Gil at hyperbrands.com, H-Y-P-R-B-R-A-N-D-S. All right. Thanks, Gil. Look forward to talking to you next week. Thanks for having me.